Hi, this is Josh Olson, and you're watching Trailers from Hell, and today we're going to do right to all and wrong no man with George Pal's 1975 Doc Savage, Man of Bronze. When slithering horror threatens, when assassins narrow their sights, when terrorists strike, killers fill the sky it would be very very easy to bag on this film because as a doc savage fan and a george pal fan it's it's very disappointing uh the trailer will really give you a perfect idea of how completely batshit crazy this movie is um but i will say that the first couple minutes of it just really captured uh so much of what i think i and a lot of other people loved about doc savage uh, the real Doc Savage, if you will, was created by Lester Dent back in the 30s in a series of pulp thrillers that ran well into the 40s. I think he wrote about 180 of them. They were reprinted when I was a kid in a series of paperbacks that uh, I was first drawn to, I think like most people my age, by the incredible covers by the very great James Bama. Uh, also, Marvel Comics, around the same time that this movie came out, published a black and white magazine, uh, Doc Savage Adventures, uh, that were written by Doug Munch and drawn by Tony DiZaniga, and that were really wonderful, really captured the feel of those books in a way that, unfortunately, this film doesn't. Um, George Powell was a, a giant in the world of science fiction film. Um, he'd done The Time Machine and War of the Worlds and movies that just were, you know, sci-fi kids just ate up with a spoon that pushed the boundaries of effects for the time. Um, and he produced this film. And my understanding is that about halfway through, the studio uh, changed heads and a lot of the money for it was pulled. But that probably doesn't account for all the problems. I will say that Ron Eli makes a great Doc Savage. Uh, he'd been Tarzan on TV for a long time and was, was great in that part. But pretty much everything else in the film kind of falls apart. Um, I think to save money, they ended up using uh, John Philip Sousa music that uh, Frank Duvall had written some bizarro lyrics to. Uh, and the songs are kind of funny. Um, the director of the film was Michael Anderson, who had also directed Around the World in 80 Days and Logan's Run. And a terrific little spy film I love called The Quiller Memorandum. Uh, this was one of those movies that I think was counting its chickens before they hatched. The, uh, at the end of the credits, it said, watch out for the arch enemy of evil. And even as a kid, as frustrated and disappointed as I was with this movie, uh, I held out the hope for years that arch enemy of evil would come out and they'd have uh, fixed all the problems with this one. But sadly, it never did. Uh, we can only wonder how, how great that film would have been. Or not. <laughs>